It's raining, but the cat's not getting wet. Even though it's raining, the cat's not getting wet. Although it's raining, the cat's not getting wet. It's raining, the cat's not getting wet though. It's raining, however, the cat's not getting wet. It's raining, nevertheless, the cat's not getting wet. In spite of the rain, the cat's not getting wet. Despite the rain, the cat's not getting wet. Why on earth do we need so many ways to express what is basically the same idea? Well, the short answer to that question is that we don't, but they can be very useful. Thank you for joining me again and welcome to any new viewers. This is To The Point English with Ben. I'm Ben. And in this video, we're going to be looking at linkers of contrast or connectors of contrast. Now, first of all, I would like to thank that cat for helping me make this video. Very useful to give those examples. But as you can see from, from that video, uh, just to contrast two very simple ideas, we have a number of different options. We don't really necessarily need all these different options. In fact, I made a video about a year ago, I think, where I look at the nine linkers that we really use. On, in colloquial conversational English. But it's useful to learn more linkers because if you're preparing for an exam, which I know many of you are, or you just need to, to write for your work or at university, your studies, whatever, um, we use these linkers a lot in, in writing. So we're going to look at all of those linkers that we just saw in that short clip. Uh, and I'm going to explain how and when we use them. So the first one is very simple and extremely common, so very useful, and it's but. I'm sure you all know how to use but. Uh, but is used to link to contrasting ideas and it goes in the middle of the sentence. And the second and third linkers that we saw in the video were even though and although. Now, even though and although are basically synonyms. They have the same meaning and the same use. And they are used to introduce contrasting and surprising ideas. And we can use them at the beginning or in the middle of the sentence. So in my example in the short clip, I said, even though it's raining, the cat's not getting wet. But you could say the cat's not getting wet even though it's raining. Exactly the same meaning. Perhaps the only difference between even though and although is that even though is slightly more emphatic, slightly stronger than although. But really they are, they are basically synonyms. And the third linker we saw in the short clip was though. Um, now, though is more informal than even though and although. It's very similar, but more informal and much more common. As I said in my previous video, I mentioned though because we use it a lot, usually at the end of a sentence. So again, in my example, I said, it's raining, the cat's not getting wet though. But though is very versatile. It can go at the beginning of the sentence. So it could be though it's raining, the cat's not getting wet. That's a little bit more formal. Or in the middle, you can say, the cat's not getting wet, though it's raining. And the next two linkers, which are also synonyms, were however and nevertheless. So we usually use however and nevertheless at the beginning of a sentence when you're introducing a contrasting idea to the idea expressed in the previous sentence. And remember always to follow however or nevertheless with a comma. It's a big mistake I see in many of my students writing compositions. It should always be followed with a comma. And again, the only real difference between however and nevertheless is that nevertheless is slightly more formal. And it's very useful to have an alternative to however in your writings. So you're just not always repeating the same words, the same linkers or cohesive devices. And the last two linkers we saw were in spite of and despite. Again, they are synonyms, but it's very useful to know both of them to avoid repetition. Again, in, in your writing or even in your speaking, if you have to give a more formal presentation or speech. So again, these are used to link contrasting ideas and they can be used at the beginning of the sentence or in the middle. So in my example, I said, in spite of the rain, the cat's not getting wet. But you could say the cat's not getting wet in spite of the rain, of course. Now you have to be a bit careful with in spite of and despite because there are different ways of constructing a sentence. So my example, uh, in spite of the rain, so that's the noun, the rain. So in spite of or despite the rain, that's one structure you can use, the despite of or in spite of plus the noun. But it's also very common to use the fact that. So you could say, despite the fact that it's raining, the cat's not getting wet. So as you can see, a lot of different ways of basically expressing the same idea, which 
To be honest, in normal conversational English, we don't use that much. Most of those words, most of those linkers, we don't use um, on a day-to-day -day basis. But for your writing, it's very useful. And again, if you're giving a formal presentation or, or a speech of some kind for your, your studies at university, college, or in your work, it's good to have a range of options so you're not always repeating the same, the same words or, in this case, linkers and connectors. Okay, thank you for joining me again. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you very soon for another one. Take care. Bye.